In a remote village in Russia, residents are disappearing one after another. The police believe they are simply leaving, but in reality, something horrific is happening there. Among the residents, there is a ruthless murder. Hi, you're watching the Dronis channel. In today's video, I want to tell you about the case that happened in Russia more than 20 years ago. And this case really shows you that sometimes police should suspect everyone, no matter how old they are and how innocent they look. If you'll find this video interesting, please leave a like at the end and let's begin. This story began in the Pskov region of Russia in 2005. It is a not-so-rich region in the northwestern part of country. Towards the end of the year, a woman went to one of the police departments and reported that her 54-year-old brother Vladimir Ivanov had disappeared without a trace. He used to visit her in her native village, but for the past five weeks he hadn't been in touch. The woman went to search for him herself in the village of Podborne, where he lived, with his wife. Vladimir's wife, Anna, said that he disappeared a month and a half ago after leaving home following an argument. The police went to Podborne to try to figure out where Vladimir could have disappeared. The village turned out to be small. At the time, only five people lived there. It was a typical so-called dying village. In Russia, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, it became common for young people to leave small villages for big cities to find work or study, leaving behind only middle-aged and elderly people. Over time, due to natural reasons, the populations dwindled as residents aged and died, and young people didn't return. This led to villages with no employment opportunities becoming almost completely deserted. Such was the case with Podborne. Talking to Vladimir's wife, Anna Kuzmina, the detectives found out that arguments between the couple were not uncommon, and after one of those arguments Vladimir got angry and left. Anna said that she didn't know where he could have gone. It probably could have been St. Petersburg, as it is the closest big city where people can easily find jobs especially considering the fact that Vladimir was a very good electrician. However, this lead didn't go anywhere, because Vladimir still wasn't found. In general, for the police, Vladimir's disappearance wasn't surprising, considering that, by the words of his wife, they had an argument. Also, he was a hard-working man who didn't drink a lot, so it was normal for him to leave for a big city and work there. Gradually, Vladimir's disappearance was basically forgotten by police, as they thought that sooner or later he will cool down after his argument with wife and just return home. But two months later, Podborne appeared again in police reports. 63-year-old resident Galina Valchichina disappeared. Her husband, Anton Seryogin, was looking for her. They lived in another village, but a year ago, after an argument, Galina packed her things and moved to Podborne. Two weeks before her disappearance, she told her husband Anton that she was moving to St. Petersburg to live with her relatives, giving him their address and phone number. On the day of supposed departure, Anton came to see Galina, but she wasn't home, although the door was locked. The villagers claimed that Galina had already left for St. Petersburg. She drank with other villagers by the river, celebrating her departure, and then one of the villagers said that she saw Galina leaving for the bus. But the detectives couldn't find Galina in St. Petersburg too. So, well, at this point, from five people living in Podborne, three disappeared without a trace, not telling anything to their relatives or close ones. But maybe the police detectives in such a small police department could not believe that in a small village where mostly older people live, somebody could have been killing all of the residents. So they probably didn't consider people disappearing to be something serious. A month later, a resident of the nearby village of Shigli, Sergei Yefimov, came to the police. He reported that his 46-year-old friend, Vladimir Schmidt, had disappeared. He was a tractor driver who was born in another village, but moved to Podborne shortly after his divorce in the year 2000. And he was living there alone. At the time of Vladimir's disappearance, there were only three people left in the village. Him, Anna Kuzmina, Vladimir Ivanov's wife, and Lubov Baskakova, who didn't permanently reside in Podborne, but often used her house there as a summer residence. Sergei was a close friend of Vladimir, and they often met. But in mid-February of 2006, Vladimir simply disappeared and stopped contacting anyone. Sergei went to visit his friend himself, 
but when he came to his house, the door was nailed shut, and the two remaining residents of the village, Anna and Lubov, told him that Vladimir probably also went to St. Petersburg. However, Sergei doubted that his close friend would make such a decision without informing him and without visiting before leaving. In the same year, 2006, the police department received yet another report. Near the village of Podborne, locals found the body of a woman in the pond. She was 72-year-old Lubov Baskakova, one of the two remaining residents of Podborne, after three of them supposedly left. Forensic experts determined that Lubov died from a cranial trauma. She was permanently living in St. Petersburg and was just sometimes visiting Podborne as a summer house. But at some point, she just stopped contacting her relatives from St. Petersburg. Because of this, they contacted their acquaintance from the neighboring village, Alexander, and asked him to visit Lubov's house and try to find out what happened to her. When he visited, she wasn't at home. But Anna Kuzmina confidently informed him that Lubov had also gone to St. Petersburg. She said she even saw Lubov leave. However, Lubov's relatives from St. Petersburg knew that it wasn't true, because she didn't come home there. Alexander decided to walk around the village, and at some point he was shocked, when he soon found Lubov's body not far in the pond near the village. The police detectives arrived to the crime scene. They found no leads on who could have done such a thing to 72-year-old woman and why. At this point, four out of five residents of the village disappeared, and people in neighboring villages started spreading rumors, considering Podborne a cursed place, and did not doubt that all missing persons were murdered. And at this point, the police detectives became interested in the last remaining resident of Podborne, Anna Kuzmina, because she was the last person who saw Lubov alive. Anna, who was 53 years old, was born in the southern part of Russia. But what interested the detectives the most was that when they found her police records, they saw that in 1992, Anna was arrested for murder. What was even more surprising was that her victim was her mother. Reading the materials of the criminal case, the detectives were shocked. In 1992, Anna sold her apartment and quickly spent all of the money she received from this sale. Her mother, Maria Sergeyevna, became mad and this led to a conflict between them. Maria believed that Anna had stolen from the family, but over time the conflict subsided and the family reconciled. But after reconciliation, one day Maria asked her daughter to help her with her hair. And in the process, while Maria was sitting with her back to Anna, she took a heavy object made of lead and began hitting her mother on the head. Anna finished her off stabbing her mother with a knife. This act appeared to be spontaneous. Anna promptly went to the police station and reported the crime she committed, ultimately receiving a short prison sentence of only nine years. Such sentences are common in Russia, especially considering that courts usually take lighter approach to women there. Anna was released from prison a year earlier than expected, on parole. After it, she moved to a Pskov region and found a job at a local farm. Her colleagues and acquaintances didn't know about Anna's past and spoke of her only positively. She seemed kind and helpful and was easily creating connections with new people, so she always had a lot of friends. And police detectives noticed when examining Lubov Baskakova's body that she was also killed similarly to Anna's mother. She was struck on her head with a heavy object, but the police had no direct evidence against Anna. So, the detectives obtained a search warrant and came to Anna's house. There, they offered her the chance to confess voluntarily. Anna thought about it for a moment, and apparently, unaware that police lacked strong evidence against her, she decided to confess to the murder of Lubov. She began describing the murder on paper, and as the detectives continued searching her house, they noticed that the date, February 13th, was crossed out on the last year's calendar hanging on the wall. Anna explained that February 13th was the anniversary of her husband's Vladimir Ivanov's death. Detectives were surprised. Vladimir was considered to be missing, and according to Anna, he possibly went to St. Petersburg. So they asked why she is telling that he's dead. Kuzmina realized her mistake, and she had no choice but to tell her story. 
In 2004, Anna and Vladimir started living as a husband and wife soon after they met each other. Everything was fine between them, but a year after, they started to have arguments. Once, after Vladimir didn't come home on the previous night and returned only in the morning, they had an especially heated argument. After they both seemingly cooled down, Vladimir went to another room. Anna Kuzmina, while her husband was sitting with his back to the door reading a newspaper, approached him from behind and dealt with him as she did with her mother, using a hammer. She disposed of the body of her husband within six hours using a large oven in the garden and an axe. After scattering the ashes in the pond, she came home and marked the date on the calendar to commemorate her husband in a year, as it's done traditionally in Russia. After her husband's death, Kuzmina struggled financially as she relied on his pension. However, other villagers were kind and sympathetic, not leaving Kuzmina in need. They helped her with groceries and money, with the most assistance coming from her neighbor, Galina Valchikina. Anna and Galina became closer friends, and when Galina announced her intention to move to St. Petersburg, the villagers gathered at the pond and drank with her, celebrating her departure. Later, Galina and Anna went to Galina's home and continued drinking there. However, while packing, Galina noticed that some of her saved money was missing. She began to suspect Kuzmina as she was the person that was coming to her home more often than the other villagers. An argument erupted between them, and Anna grabbed an electrical wire from the other room and used it to strangle Galina. Afterward, she dragged her neighbor's body to the cellar and buried it in the ground. The next victim of Kuzmina was Vladimir Schmidt. He visited her at some point and said that he suspects Kuzmina of the disappearance of her husband and Galina. After talking to him, Anna calmly returned home and took a hammer. Schmidt was smart enough to suspect Anna, but for some unknown reason, he didn't fear for his life and was drinking moonshine outside of Anna's house while she was inside of it. Then Anna brought him food and said she needed the hammer to drive a nail when Vladimir asked why she holds it, and Schmidt believed her. They continued talking and, at some point, Kuzmina approached him from behind and struck Vladimir on the head a few times. She then disposed of the body using the furnace as she did with her husband. Her last victim was Lyubov Baskakova. When Lyubov returned to the village, she and Kuzmina spent a lot of time together as friends. But soon Anna started feeling that Lyubov was suspicious of her. At this point she probably was just paranoid, but she wasn't able to stop anyway. When Lyubov was about to leave back to St. Petersburg, Kuzmina discreetly followed her along the path, holding a brick in her hand. Then she attacked her. When she struck Lyubov on the head, she fell in the pond, but she didn't lose consciousness right away, so they fought for some time, but eventually Kuzmina was able to overpower Lyubov. During the trial, Anna was considered to be sane but she desperately tried to evoke sympathy from the court. She was pretending to cry and suffer remembering about her victims, because she was hoping that she will get a lighter sentence, like with her mother's murder trial. But when she realized that she will get a long term in prison, in her final words, Kuzmina said that she regretted that she didn't get rid of Lyubov's body, because she thought that if she did so, she wouldn't have been caught. Anna Kuzmina was sentenced to 21 years in prison. In 2019, she passed away. Since Anna Kuzmina's arrest, no one lives in Podborne, as she was the last remaining resident of that village. Thank you for watching the video, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.